Is driving five hours to the next beach too far for you? Why not learn how to design a pond in Flow so you can have a swim in your pond with Nemo? If that's actually your thing, swimming in ponds. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a pond in Flow and then all the properties that you need to know regarding the flow through pond structure. Also, I'm gonna show you how to define a shape in Flow Plus. Without further ado, let's begin. Before we start, we need to understand what we actually need to create our pond. So let's go have a look. We have this simple network where we have two runs that go into the pond and then they leave and go into an existing manhole. So let's zoom in and have a look. So we have head wall one, head wall two. That's why we named them as HW2 and they are junctions. The reason I've done them as junctions is because I know there is no manhole there. So I believe junction is the best way to model it. Then we have a third junction, which is our outlet node, which is HW3 that goes into a flow control and existing manhole. So immediately we know that we need two things. We need an inlet node so basically what goes in and what goes out the outlet it's a universal route whatever goes in goes out in the nodes i made sure that hw1 hw2 and hw3 my head walls are specified as junctions in the node type to do that the plus icon here show extend properties you can change the node type from junction from manhole to junction and then just make sure you click once outside so it can the effects can take change in the storage tab that is where we specify the flow through pond in the node we're gonna type always our outlet node in our case it's hw3 the one that leaves the pond in the structure type we select flow through pond if we have infiltration we can calculate them or set them here in our case we're not gonna look into it the safety factor is you can take it out from the suds and usually applies through the catchment area and the risk of failure and it's depending on how much area goes in and if it fails, what's the impact? Then we have porosity. Now, because the pond that we're looking at is an open space, the porosity should be one. Now the invert level, if the invert level of the pond is different from the invert level of the outlet node, then you can just type it here. Then we have the main channel length. Now this channel length represents the distance that the water will run from the inlet to the outlet. So I would suggest to pick the longest distance. In our case, they're the same. So if we look at our long section, and you can bring it by clicking on the display long section button, you can see we are at chainage 50 and we finish at 80. So it's 30 meters. Now, because flow simulation, like any drainage simulation, is done in 1D and 2D, it's, I rarely have seen them in 3D and because it takes so much time to run the simulation. What happens is we give them properties like, for example, the length. Okay, this is the length that the water will run. So when the software does all the calculations, it goes, okay, what's the length that's going to run? Okay, 30 meters. That's it. It's going to do 30 meters. What's the slope of it? One in 500. If I change this one, one in three, just to see what happens. You can see that my pond starts from the very top and you cannot see this in 3D because as I said, this applies on the long section in terms of display and displaying the properties and in the calculations. So you can see that applies one in three from the head wall three backwards. In our case, we're gonna do one in 500. Some people do one in 350. Let me know in the comments below, which one do you use? Now the main channel N, the best way to describe it is basically how easily can the water travel through that surface of the pond. I've done some research, 0 0.03 is the one for grass. Now, if you know that's incorrect or you use something different, let us know in the comments below so we can share the knowledge now in the inlet nodes we type the inlet nodes that we have in our case it's hw1 and hw2 the time to half empty which is a requirement usually by the llfas like they want to make sure that the storage structure empties before half empties before the next storm we can get this one after we run our simulation analysis now let's look at the depth area columns in the infiltration area we just type the area we're not going to look into it as i said we don't have any infiltration so we always start at depth zero now the depth zero means the bottom of the pond so at the bottom of the pond what is your area well it's 300 in my case because i drew it in cad and i know the bottom of the area of the pond now because i know the slope will be one in three i want to achieve a depth of one and i offset it by three meters like the perimeter of the bottom of the pond i got my area at the outer now in case you don't know what that will be and you just know the depth that you want to achieve then you can click the calc button select the set side slope type one in three and just make sure you have the zero depth the area at the bottom and then the depth that you want so if i hit apply you can see it remains the same because that's what i've done if i wanted a two meter depth pond and i hit apply you can see it almost doubled almost 
So if I do back one and I hit apply, that's one in three. If I do one in six, for example, you can see that the area changes. So if I do one in 10, you can see the area gets increased because, you know, slope increases, which makes absolute sense. Now you can do the same for the volume. So if you have a, a specific set volume in your mind, so you can do one in 100, 100 cubic meters. If I hit apply, you can see it changed the area at the bottom and the area at the top. And that is because of the depth that you've specified. But in my case, I want 300 and the size slope one in three and hit apply. So now if I hit outside, you can you always have to click once outside so you can all the effects can take place. Our pond has been designed so you can see the green check mark so everything is fine. Let's look at the shape of the pond for a second. So we have head wall one, head wall two, and head wall three. Now these three nodes will kind of define the shape of the node of the pond. So we, if you imagine that we draw a line that connects all three dots, that would have been our pond. But because we want to achieve a bigger area and volume, Flow added the extra vertex so it can achieve that area slash volume that we need. If we needed a bigger volume, it would have changed that as well. Now, let's run our simulation analysis just so we can see what we get. Now, for the one year, we can see it's been surcharged, but let's look at the 100 year and force percent climate change. We can see that the pond is surcharged and you can see it here. But we want to make sure that we're not exceeding the freeboard. So you can see the depth of the pond at the 720 winter, which is the most critical one I've selected. It's at 711 millimeters. That means it's under 300 mil of my freeboard that I wanted. So therefore, I know either I have to increase the pond slightly so I can achieve that 300 mil board, or I might lay the slide because it's just 11 mil. But that's the results that we get. So this is the basic of flow through pond modeling in flow. Now, if you have flow plus, then in the sketch tab, you can amend the shape of the pond. To do that, we're going to click on define flow through pond shape. We're going to left click on the pond that we want. And then we're going to start left clicking and draw the pond that we want to draw. In my case, I'm going to draw something very like, let's say, rectangular. Once I'm done, I right click to close it. And you can see that my pond has been altered. But we're not done yet because I, if I go back to my storage, I need to make sure that the side slope is one in three. So if I hit apply, you can see that now it's done correctly. So if I click once outside, you can see now it's changed and the sides of the pond are one in three. So now let's run the simulation analysis one more time just to make sure we don't have any issues. So if I go to the 100 year and 4% climate change, I can see that actually my pond is reaching its capacity. It's actually flooding because we don't have any freeboard anymore. So what I could do is two options or go back to my sketch and make it slightly bigger, make it slightly bigger by dragging these nodes and then go back to my storage, make sure it is one in three, hit the analysis button and let's have a look. I don't think it would have impacted, but I just want to see that it's reduced at least slightly. So let's have a look. So that is slightly reduced, but still not enough. But you get the idea. So this is what we do when we want to model a pond in flow. So if you find this tutorial useful, drop the like button and share it with your colleagues so they can learn how to do a pond in flow. See you next time.